Well, if he takes this pot on, that's the natural angle the white would go. So he's got to be careful here what, uh, what happens with the cue ball if he pots this. Well, at first glance, well, he hasn't got away with it. Barry's a left-hander. There's a, an easy opener to the right corner for him. And it just shows you there, Dennis, doesn't it? The benefit of having that cue ball tight on the ball cushion. You just felt that if it wasn't tight on the ball cushion, there's no way John Higgins would have missed that red. Tight on the cushion is where you want your safety shots to finish. One. Well, what a chance now. If he can remove the red, he'll probably play for the one to the right of the cue ball, get it out of the way, and the black's available into both corners. I'm just wondering if that red is on the black spot. So we'll find out shortly. If it's on the black spot, the black will still be available when it... Oh, no, it goes on the pink spot. So that makes quite a difference. Eight. Uh, it depends whether the pink <coughs> goes past the black now into the left corner. Well, that's tight. The black might just go. He's got the option of playing up for the blue, of course. Well, that's not the best positional shot. He may have to take the black now. I think he played for the blue, but he's hampered himself. But we did see previously that the black would go. Black ball. Yeah, pretty good, that. <coughs> Sixteen. Get the black back on the spot. It would just help the situation here. Okay. Put the black and hold for the red to the right of the little group of four reds. Well, he's looking at the, the pink also. Oh, that black looks tight now. It, it potted easy previously. Pink will go on to the <coughs> black spot. So a good chance. Thirty-eight. Just switching hands, using the rest with his right hand. Thirty-nine. Funny how that happens. I remember uh, the Canadians, Kirk <coughs> Stevens, the man with the white suit, Elaine Robidoux, they played snooker right-handed and played golf left-handed. Tony Mayo, he was a left-hander. Do you remember Tony uh, 
partnered Steve Davis to six world doubles titles, used to use 45. the rest with his right hand. I thought Kirk played golf left-handed just to give me a chance. <laughs> In the meantime, Barry Hawkins taking these very well, and it was a very important visit, this, I felt. 51. Lost the last two frames. Confidence would have ebbed slightly. Good pot success he's got, 93%. John Higgins just below 90, 52. which you'll have to pick up on. And Barry just slightly ahead. I always say with these stats, particularly potting and safety, you need to be 90% and above, so both players getting chances. 57. <clears throat> Long pot success. I think that's good, 75%. I don't think you can be looking at 90% and above on the long pot success, because half of them, you're playing shots for nothing anyway. You've got that air of safety in mind. 58. All stats that are telling us that Barry Hawkins should be in front. He may well be after this frame, but Mr. Trick, didn't he, in the fifth frame? Looks certain to go 4-1. So just the red McCullough needed now to re-establish his lead. And there'll be two more frames to play after this one. And this match will be resumed this evening and played to a finish. Oh, he's missed it, has he? Ooh, well, he used 64. all the pocket. And he looks up to the heavens. He thought he'd missed that one. Seventy points in front with sixty seven remaining. Seventy. Seventy one. Seventy seven. But, uh, he did what he had to do, John Higgins clawed his way back to three apiece, but Barry Hawkins goes in front once more. He now leads the world champion by four frames to three. So no centuries so far in this match, that is the closest to date. Into frame eight we go. Now Higgins, the defending champion, has built up a half-decent lead in this one as Hawkins makes his way back to the table. Hawkins eyeing up a plant here, but he's 52 points behind. 